Hey guys, Craig here. Now, uh, it's been, been a while since we last spoke to each other, uh, particularly on the channel. That'll be another video, but just to sum it up, COVID and lockdown and all that good stuff that's come with that, along with moving house and essentially country, going from Scotland to England. And again, I've had a bit of a, a change of career since moving. Everything is starting to quieten down a little bit now, and I've got a little bit more time free. So, the build log I'm going to be doing, as you can see from here, is the Hobby Boss Jackal High Mobility Weapon Platform. This will be a full build log, and I'll start doing the videos on this, but this is just going to be the quick inbox review. Um, let, let, let's see what it's like. It's it's brand new release. This is kit number 8452. And that's what we're dealing with, the Jackal 1 High Mobility Weapons Platform. I believe the Jackal 2 and the Coyote is also coming from Hobby Boss. Uh, this is just the first kit being released, but I'm, I believe there's two others coming out to fulfil the family on this. So just quickly talk about the box. Length is 171.5mm long and 68.5mm wide. It's got some detail on the side on like the photo etch parts and the like coming along here. It's got a little bit of a brief description of what the um, what the jackal actually is, who it, who uses it and what, where it's used and the like. On the other side of the box, it's got a little bit of a key to parts included. So we've got the photo etch frets, we've got the decals. And then we've got the side profile with the thirty mil, uh, the twenty millimeter GMG grenade launcher, and that's basically the box. So inside the box, then it's actually quite um, a packed box. It's literally jam packed full of bits and bobs. There's loads of frets in here. So the first one, I've already taken all the packaging off just to make this easier. So the first one we've got, it looks like the we'll put it on this way, is a ballistic paneling for the sides. We've also got the, the ammo box storage here for the doors. We've got the plate at the back for the ECM antennas and everything. Bit of the ROPS, the rollover protection system. Same here. We've got the slew ring for the Wimic kit, which is the weapons mounted kit. We've also got some of the supports and um, uprights and everything, and basically armor panels. And that just looks like an ancillary one. But looking at the fret, let's just try and move this camera down a bit looking at the fret it's crisp it's clean there doesn't appear to be any flash on that whatsoever and the detail is pretty phenomenal um what i'll do at the end of this i'll just quickly go through the frets again but i'll get a closer view but this is just a general look at what's on the frets so that is d the next one out the box is fret c or tree c so what we've got on this one, we've got the wheel arches or the inner wheel arches. We've got the rear stowage box that go, goes in the back of the vehicle. We've got what looks like part of the interior for the uh, cab. We've got more ROPS rollover protection system across here and rollover bars. We've got the interior. Um, we can go through that in more detail and explain what everything is on here um pedals and just basically ancillary stuff ammo belts ecm sort of like antennas coming along here We've got winch um ecm boxes and basically that's that's about it it's just mainly the interior stuff on this fret so again, I'll go over these a little bit more detail, but I'm just showing you what's coming out of the box as it comes. We have two of the same, which are fret A. So you get two of these, and what basically looks like it's on here is the wheels and suspension components and steering components and supports and braces. Yeah, we've got some more ROPs here. But that's basically two of those. Again, the detail on this, I haven't seen any flash when I looked it over, is pretty phenomenal. Moving across, we are now fret B. 
So what this looks like is all the suspension components. So some of that's on the Jackal is it's got air suspension and it's also on Fox Racing hydrogen filled shock absorbers because the vehicle was designed in a Parry Dakar sort of way. So this vehicle is actually designed to go faster off road and be comfortable. Hence the the special suspension on it. But it's it's basically the front lifts up, the back lifts up um, on airbags, and then it's got the nitrogen filled uh, shock absorbers in there to flatten out the bumps and that as you're going faster off road. And then basically the rest of this on here is wheels, and one of these is the storage set where you put the jerry cans on the back of the the back side of the vehicle, uh, jerry cans and the like on that one. We have another sprue B, so it's again two of these, exactly the same. We've also got the seats, so we won't go into that. We've also got corrections. We have four, four sprues of B. So I can see why they've done that. So with the suspension components, it's on double wishbone suspension. So you've got the upper and the lower wishbones. So each one of these, each one of these frets, each one of these trees is a wheel station, um, and everything that goes with building up an entire wheel station on that vehicle. Um, so that's why there's four of these for that reason. The next thing out of the box, we also have the chassis and basically the floor plan of the actual jackal itself. So we've got the load bed at the back here. We've got the gunner position here. Now looking at this, it's got this area here, so it looks as though it's got two seats, which would be a Jackal 2. The seat in the Jackal 1, there's only one in the back of a Jackal 1. It sits at the back and it's rearward facing, um, and that was a Jackal 1. The Jackal 2 has a two side-by-side -side seats, the same as a Coyote. Um, so we'll come into this if there's a bit of an inaccuracy later on. Whether this is a one, a one alpha, or a, an amalgamation of a one and a two, but the Jackal Two is very, very different to the one. Um, and that—that's basically that. There's not much on the underside, but the, a good thing to notice with this is there's none of the raised flash points you, you normally get on sort of like these Hobby Boss Dragon uh, main kits, where the injection points have got like half moons coming out. These are all flush um, and don't look as though, well, they're all smooth. They're, there's nothing rough on any of the injection points. So that's pretty good. We have the main bulk of the vehicle then. So this is the actual chassis, the belly plate, um, running gear and the like. And looking at it, it's very crisp, very clear. The detail is pretty good. So on, on these vehicles, we've got lots of little compartments like on the side here, which is um, the, radiate, the radiator side and the fans for cooling and everything. The radiators are on this side. This is just a ballistic panel. On this side, what you'd have in this box would be all the air tanks. So the air tanks are in there and that's for the air suspension and for the brakes. And the one that's above it, which isn't shown yet no basically what what goes here is the air filter element and the air intake for the vehicle um so there's no internal detail in this so you can't have these open or closed but down here on this side is the batteries so they're optimal batteries that are in here and there's generally four of them um, and that's to run all the communication stuff like bowman and everything but looking at this, it looks fairly detailed, fairly accurate. Uh, this little U-shaped thing here is a, a stowage net. So what's missing off of here, I haven't seen any fabric or anything yet, is the actual netting to go across here to put stuff in. And there's a few other places on the vehicle where there is netting uh, for that specific reason. So we'll see how they tackle that, whether it's a, a plastic bit that goes on or whether it's just going to be left like that with no moulding. But looking at... Looking at the box, it's not actually modelled. So here would be a net going around here. And the same on the other side where that U bracket is, is a net 
but it doesn't appear to be modeled in any way shape or form looking at the box here they've got the brackets and everything but they haven't put the netting across so that might just be an oversight on their part or they couldn't figure out how to do that but anyway moving on we've got four tires which are still in the bag and they look like the tires they've got the right tread pattern and everything well, let's take one out so you can see it clear They've got the right tread pattern tread pattern for a jackal so it's it's that military let's try and focus that in it's that military sort of like chunky it's not focusing that chunky pattern that you'd expect these are these are pretty good tires in in the real world um they are ballistic protected they're quite an expensive tire and they are capable of um CTIS, Central Tire Inflation on it, so you can pump them up and down for extra grip. We've got a clear clear sprue, which is basically the lenses to everything, so all your indicators, lights, brake lights and all that. So we've got a clear sprue. The last plasticky one is looks like it's just purely GMG stuff. So we've got 20mm grenade launcher. We've got what looks like the other half of it. We've got a GMG belt there barrel ammo box um some of these brackets will be for mounting this and some ballistic plating by the looks of it uh they look like wheel arch inner wheel arches for the that's what it looks like it might not be um, we'll find out what these bits are for but it looks like something to do with the wheel arches it doesn't the jackal doesn't have a turret per se um so we'll find out what that's for. That's basically all the sprues out of the box. Next is a photo etch. So we've got some brackets and some straps here. And some grills. So that is one. We've got some more brackets. We've got the wire cutters. We've got the steps down the side here. Not, not so much steps. The grills for above the steps. And we've got some bracket in here. And nothing looks on there to be anything to do with what I was on about just now. The sand ladders. So there's usually two of these uh, for the vehicle that attach to the front. But you've only got one. We've got some... Uh, what would you call this? Photo etch. Not sure what that's for yet, but I'm sure that will become apparent. But it looks kind of wheel archy. Mud flappy sort of fret. And then we've got more brackets um, and grills there with whatever that's supposed to be at the bottom, like a bracing strap or something. So that is all the sprues out. The only other thing that we've got left in there really is the decal sheet. I haven't opened it and I won't. We'll go through that when I do. But it's basically all the decals for the vehicle. And just looking at it, you get number plates, you get some markers, you get the warning flammable signs, you get the... What are those can't really see it. It looks like these looks like the signs that you get for the Bowman and that to stay away from it in case it arcs through you. And then all the little tire pressure things and everything else that go on it on there. So looking at it through the paper, it looks alright. Let's just get rid of some of this. We'll put them all back in there for now. To get some space. So you get a couple of bits in here then. You get a paint guide, um, which is just generally all done in, well, it's Hobby Boss, Acrovision, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamiya, or Humbrol. So you get all the different paint options to paint this in a desert scheme. Um, and that's just a general painting guide for the desert variant. On the other side, what's the difference? What's the difference between this and that? Uh, the, the other side is detail painting, so you've got all the different greens for the ammo boxes, jerry cans, seat covers and that. Um, looking at this, this seat colour is wrong. It's not a green, it's more of um, a sandy deserty colour for the seats. I've never seen the green, the green seats in one of these. However, if you're going to do one of these, you can do this in a NATO colour as well now because you do get them in green. I suggest you Google image for the green paint scheme of it. So it's NATO. 
this is just purely the desert variant so just looking at this um it's just a painting guide we've also got on here what looks like the photo etch part it just shows you where the photo etch goes um unless this is going to be a, a separate thing in the future it looks as though it's just the instructions kind of where the photo etch goes on the back side oh no i'll tell you what that is that's just the the kit showing you the photo etch on the back is just other kits so that's that you can tell i haven't really prepped this and read it to its fullest so we've got an instruction manual there is 24 pages from start to finish and i presume this is just going to be your typical hobby boss sort of stuff so the first page is your sprue sprue guide your second page is starting on the interior of the vehicle and some of the photo etch grills so we'll find out together what some of these pieces are for it looks as though this one's starting to put suspension components on and meet in the top to the bottom more suspension components going on then we've got the upper arms going on no bottom arms going on steering rack and all that good stuff on here we've got more components for the suspension element of the top here on step six the upper arms are going on in step seven step eight is starting to put ballistic paneling on and liners and inner wheel arches step nine is all the wheel arch stuff so that photo etch that we were saying might be it wheel arch is actually photo etch um we've got some brackets here to hold up the rear mud flaps again that's both that, that's photo etch and exactly the same on the front of the vehicle is just a bracket in and the photo etch mud flaps then we're on to wheels so step 12 is putting the wheels together up there putting the tires on step 13 is putting the side steps on step 14 is putting more mud flaps on step 15 is starting to assemble the interior parts to the vehicle so you've got some rops going on there your rollover protection system you've got your commander's side with um blue force tracker and everything going on on there you've got ammo boxes going in and more ammo boxes and storage there all in step 14. step 19 then is putting the front of the vehicle together so we've got the ecm boxes going on we've got the uh, hooks for the sand channels or sand ladders on the front going on we've got some plating it's an armored plate it's, it's almost like how a glacis plate works on a tank it's basically a, a an angled bit of metal that goes in front just to give you that protection from something coming in sand channels and bowman antennas we've got steering wheel we've got some hooks and that for the door for the hinges and the steps going on these steps are average in the real world these generally bend and get in the way and they can catch on the tire um just if they get bent in the wrong way that they're not the best steps and they're on a spring so when you stand on it it comes down when you get off it it springs back up kills your shins if you're in the way um, and if you slip on it it rattles your knees so the other part of 19 we've got more sand channels going on up here up here we've got the front going on to the, the actual vehicle and the seats have been fitted step 20 is the bowman rack so this is all communications equipment going in which sits behind the driver's seat here um, and behind the driver's seat is the fuse panels and everything so all of this is all wired around here and then it, it's a nightmare full of cables and wiring so if, you, if you're going to do one of these you, you got and you want to put that extra detail in there's a lot of wires to put on as well um so that's basically the bowman rack in step 20 wait a minute i've missed a page somewhere that was step 20 we've gone to 23 step 21 then 
we have the rays okay so this isn't per se a jackal one this is a jackal one alpha um because it's got the two seats in the back i can show you pictures and that of a, a proper jackal one um so we're on a jackal one alpha at the bare least or they've got a little bit mixed up and confused the jackal two with a jackal one for money for saving money so we've got the pioneer kit that goes on the um the gunner's plate which basically sits here and then your your pioneer kit sits along here it's got the ballistic seats and everything going in here we've talked about the seats being wrong wrongly modeled on this we've got the rops down here which is again rollover protection and it's got all the um brackets and all the, all the bits and bobs that go on there uh, so basically it's a roll cage um you can strip it down so it's flat so if you're gonna air move it or put it on an aircraft or you you need to save space you would fold all this down and then when you're ready to go you fold it all up and it's your 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 roll cage so if you end up on your roof you've got protection 22 is more of the same it's more of the rear the rear rops behind the rear seats here so it, it's all of this that goes in behind the seats and um, so basically the rear wall We've got a fire extinguisher going on down here. Um, not much else to say on that. Step 23 up here then. We are now looking at the air filter assembly. So we've got the air filter up here. We've got the boiling vessel um, to make your, your brews and your food and everything. Which does sit up around here. We've also got... Oh yeah, that's just the air filter completing that. We've also got the rear stowage bin. So the rear stowage bin can, is basically an ECM box. That's that's what makes the system work. That's where like all the computers and that are. Um, and then when it hasn't got that in, it's basically a toolbox. <coughs> you put kit in it. <coughs> but it is the ECM box. At the back, we've got all the planes and that for the ECM. So a spoiler that put all your antennas and everything on. Um, we've got the ballistic doors going on with the wheel on the inside, so that'll be left and right. So we've got the, the hinge system, the ballistic panel and the tyre, and then on the other side it's exactly the same, but instead of a tyre, you've got ammo box storage. Um, so as I was saying, funny enough, here's your ammo box storage for the other door. We've got the front doors, which are, again, just ballistic panelling. Um, it's got some hand grips and everything going on and some handles and the like. We've got some ballistic panelling down here, which covers the boiling vessel area up here. Rear toe hitch and everything's going on at this point. All the rear lenses and all the recovery points. On the back of the vehicle, we've got the jerry can storage that folds down. Um... And basically, that, basically, this whole page, 26, is the back end, which is just putting the jerry can storage on. So one side would be fuel, one side would be water. Ballistic panelling for the other parts of the vehicle on the front here. And that's basically step 26. Step 27 is the rest of the ROPs. Smoke discharges, front and rear. Bowman kit on the back here and the brackets which make this up step 28 is the slew ring and the um where the weapon mount is and that all goes on uh, and then we're into step 29 which is the gmg and the the seat and everything that fits in the slew ring step 30 is the gpmgs for the commander so what you'd usually get with one of these, the, the commander would have a GPMG and you'd either have a 50 cal or the GMG up here, one or the other, or you could have two GPMGs. You can basically put whatever weapon system you want on here. It doesn't have to be the, the 20 mil GMG. Um, so you can play around with various types, but generally the commander's one is, is a single GPMG. You've got the ECM plane on the back. Um which is just basically antennas and that, and that acts, it almost looks like a spoiler going across. And step 31 is just showing you 
the complete vehicle um, and that's basically that so from this everything looks about right there's a couple of inaccuracies with the internals from what I've noticed um, but the, the model of it so we'll just quickly get a closer view of some of these frets for you the, the actual plastic side of this is very detailed very crisp no flash and it is what you exactly what you'd expect it to be um so it's pretty good so let's just try and get a little bit of space here and reduce some of these frets so let's move that box so with my experience with some of this um like when i've done the husky thing i'm also a jackal instructor so i know these vehicles inside and out so if anybody has any issues or problems or you're not quite sure what something is just ask um put it in the comments and we'll go from there so we'll go through these frets i've, I've split it down so this is fret b so let's try and get that focused properly on something that will focus on being on the towel might not be the best thing um now the, t the towel's not very good just give me two seconds and i'll swap that for a a better thing let's just swap that for a box so there's no thingy right so that might be a bit better is that going to focus properly let's get a little bit more light okay so this is what we're look at, looking at on sprue b so there's four of these so you can see exactly what you're getting um so just to recap that's all the suspension for one wheel one wheel station moving on we've got sprue a is two of these and this is basically the um part of the rocks bracket spare wheel and the like and for the mud flaps and everything up here up in the top right hand corner we've got one for sprue e this light is crap let's just pop that on. that might be a little bit better so we've got sprue e gmg launcher and all of that good stuff there this is sprue c so this again this is just an overview so you can have a good look at the parts, see what you're getting. Um, make up your mind if you want one of these or not. But yep, that's sprue C pretty much, which is all the internals, all the interior of the vehicle. Then we have this one, which is sprue D. So we've got all the your weapons mount installation kit and all that brackets for the doors we've got the ballistic panels for the sides slew ring um storage boxes ammo boxes air filter and all that sort of stuff on there i've also got a new cave so a lot of this i've got a little bit more space than i had um but it's still a little bit cramped in here so here's the photo etch so we've got all those panels there what is it doing? Right. so that's all the panels that's more brackets and all sorts of stuff that is sand channels and more brackets um Let's just turn these over because there's two on each side. So we've got mud inner mud flaps. We've got more brackets and straps on the other side of that one. And we've got sand channels and more brackets on that one. So that's your photo etch completely done. We'll just do one of the tyres. So we've got proper tread pattern. There is 
although there's a seam in the middle, it's indented, it's not protruding out, so you wouldn't need to sand it. But it's an accurate tyre. So uh, it's even got all the ribs and everything on it, and all the correct markings. This is the interior. So as you can see, it's quite detailed. All the rivets and everything are in the right place. Um, the only disappointing, not a disappointing thing, but is this confusion with the rear seats. It's a little bit thingy. Only because I know the vehicle. If I hadn't known it, then you, if you hadn't been on one of these or seen one of it, you wouldn't have known. Um, this is another little bit of a an afterthought is putting the netting across um, for stowage so I might have to make my own netting for that again I should when I'm doing the build log I'll show you give you some reference pictures of a real one um, and what they actually look like the actual correct color for what we had um, and go from there it is very detailed there is a couple of pieces like here for example that we need trimming off that uh, looks as though it's just been cut off at the factory there's, that's the only two pieces I've seen just here and on the other side but everything else is pretty decent uh, I can't comment on fit because well we haven't started it yet and then that's maybe a, a better look at the the decals anyway that is us um so yeah that's everything in the box we'll go through the build log i'll start doing that soon and then we'll start getting this posted up and then we'll go from there but as usual any comments anything you want to ask anything you're not sure of just ask uh, more than willing to answer you um but yeah thanks for your time if if you like this um inbox review just give us a thumbs up or whatever speak to you soon and um it's nice to be back that's half an hour